like news outlets are like actually Jeanette McCurdy hates Ariana Grande and it's like actually I implore you to have one iota of critical reading ability. take a quick break and discuss this video's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network, which keeps you safe by encrypting your data as it travels between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data safe by protecting it from big companies and cyber criminals. Also, a VPN can switch the location of your device with another one. This is by changing your IP address, which allows you to travel virtually across the globe. Surfshark has over 3,200 servers in over 95 countries. This allows you to unblock content that is censored in your area of the world. So you can watch American Netflix if you're in Canada like me. I also love to use it to watch Modern Family, Criminal Minds, all of my favorite shows across the globe. It's like I'm already paying for these streaming services. I want to be able to use them for the full effect. As I mentioned before too, Surfshark VPN helps you protect your data by encrypting it. I actually didn't know this, or like I kind of knew this, but I never thought about it, but public Wi-Fi is literally a goldmine for hackers. They're obsessed with it. I use the public Wi-Fi at cafes and libraries and stuff like that all the time to do my work. So now I use Surfshark VPN. I just put it on when I'm working at a cafe and it protects my information from hackers. Surfshark also masks your IP address, which allows you to become private online. This means your city, country, and download history are not linked to your identity. Surfshark also has their clean web feature, which stops phishing attempts, malware, trackers, and it blocks ads. But most importantly, Surfshark does not monitor or track any of your information. If you use the code UNCARLY, you get 83% off and three months free. And there's no risk to trying it because Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. You use the code UNCARLY, you get 83% off and three months free of Surfshark VPN. And all of that information is in the description below. Thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Well, let's get back into it. I've been cracking into the book. I took a break from some work I was doing. I started, I'm glad my mom died. Right now it's just recounting her childhood with her mother and how her mom contributed to her eating disorder and abused her, some really dark stuff and how her mom got her into acting. It's written from like a child voice almost, like as she gets older, the voice in itself changed. I like that. I know it was based off of a one woman show that Jeanette McCurdy did, which I would fucking kill to see. I think it would be so good because it is very funny, but the book itself almost reads theatrical. You can kind of tell it's been like adapted from that, but it's so good. The way it's written is very accessible. It's very gripping and it's very interesting to me. Like she's talking about being friends with Miranda Cosgrove on iCarly, love it. But the subject matter in and of itself is so intense that it's a really hard dichotomy of like, I don't know if I want to read it fast or not because part of me just is enjoying the process of reading it because it's so well done. Another part of me is like, I need to sit with some of these really horrible things that are happening. Like her mom encouraging her to have an eating disorder at age 11. And when adults in her life are bringing up the fact that she's probably anorexic when she's like 10, or 11 to her mom. Her mom's like, no, and the hiding it. It's like a lot, guys.
finished. So the book itself is cut into two sections, so before and after her mother's death. And I just got to the end of before her mother's death, like her mom just died. Okay. I've read this book so fast, dude. I've read like, what percentage am I at? I'm 60% done the book and I started it yesterday. Like I can't stop reading it. It's really interesting. I mean, I was also like a big iCarly fan. I'm uncarly, baby. All of the Nickelodeon shows like Drake and Josh, Victoria, that was my shit. I was not a Disney Channel girly. I was a Nickelodeon girly. So all the stuff she's talking about with regards to Sam and Cat and iCarly and Dan Schneider, which she talks about a lot as the, as the creator. It's really interesting to me. It's so well written and interesting and heartbreaking and it's deeply troubling, has to be said. A lot of hard shit going on but so good. Oh my God. finished Jeanette McCurdy's memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died. I like when celebrities want to write a memoir about their unique experiences, but they also take the chance to write a good book. So often celebrities, you see this with YouTuber books too, I feel like it's very, very common for them just to almost like hire a ghostwriter and just write basically a diary of what happened. There's no understanding of what happened. There's no foresight. There's no like metabolizing of the information of their life. There's no like why. They're just like, here's my life. Why am I telling you? Um, because I'm famous, you fucking plebe. I'm rich and you're poor. Buy my book, you pig. That's the vibe. When a celebrity cares about the books they are writing, it's just so much more rewarding because Jeanette McCurdy has had like a very interesting, tragic, albeit, but a very, very interesting life and it's well written. So you're excited to read about the weird inner workings of being a Nickelodeon child star, but also she's funny and interesting and the reason she's writing this book isn't because she's like, I want money and my manager said I could write a book. She very clearly cares about the shit she's writing. I'm gonna go through right now and basically do a full review of this book. Five stars, absolutely loved it. One of my favorites of the year. I think it's really good. But a good portion of this will contain spoilers. I don't think it's gonna be anything too big because I think a lot of the main spoilers have been in the news, if that makes sense, in reviews of this book. While I go through this book and everything that happened it and breaking it down so you don't have to read it if you don't want to. There are an insurmountable amount of possible triggers in this book that I implore you to look up if you want to read it. But if you are triggered by eating disorders, sexual assault, emotional or physical abuse, alcoholism, but if you are triggered by any of those things, I implore you to just sit this one out. But Jeanette McCurdy grew up in poverty. Her mom and her dad and Jeanette and her three brothers all grew up in the same house. Her and her brothers ended up sleeping on basically yoga mats in their living room because although they had a bedroom to share, their mother was a hoarder and filled their beds and their rooms with newspapers and garbage, basically. Jeanette's mother wanted to be an actress and forced Jeanette into acting, but Jeanette also got into it because she wanted the financial stability and she talks about that a lot. It's like a very good notice of privilege. You know, you can still complain, obviously, about the horrible things she's had to go through, but she's like, but the financial stability was amazing. So Jeanette, as this young child, was going out and trying to book roles and taking acting class, if she could book roles, she could give her family financial stability to kind of escape the poverty that they were living in. She had a very rocky, weird relationship with her father where her father always kept her at arm's length. With her mother, there was lots of issues of control, controlling how she dressed, 
controlling what she ate, basically being like, it doesn't matter if my child doesn't want to do this. You are going to be gracious. You're going to be a good sport. She then books iCarly and there's some really amazing passages where she talks about Miranda Cosgrove. Her and Miranda Cosgrove are still very close. Her mother didn't want her to talk to Miranda because Miranda doesn't believe in God, <laughs> but Miranda would like text on her fucking sidekick and swear and take the Lord's name in vain. And they became very good friends and they would hang out all the time. It was just so nice to see. It was a very positive, experience for the both of them and they're still very good friends. She calls Dan Schneider, who is the creator of a bunch of Nickelodeon TV shows. He created Victorious, Drake and Josh, the creator. She takes his name out, I'm assuming, to not get sued. So everything that I say now is alleged. I'm not about to be sued by Dan Schneider, alleged foot fetishes. But there's been a lot of stuff online about Dan Schneider being very weird. In Victorious, there was like a lot of feet stuff. And it'd be like a 16 year old girl, like unpeeling a banana with her foot, which is nasty. Like that's just, absolutely nasty. So she refers to Dan Schneider allegedly as the creator. He would do things like scream and yell and then love bomb, very abusive tactics. He would encourage her to drink. She did not want to drink and he would encourage her to drink. She stated that she was uncomfortable wearing bikinis on set because around the age of 11, her mother encouraged her to have an eating disorder and do calorie restriction. She wanted to wear board shorts or a one piece because she was not comfortable in her body. And Dan Schneider said, no, I want you to wear a bikini. This, she was like 13 at the time, which is crazy. She was deeply uncomfortable with her first kiss where Sam kissed Freddie on iCarly. She was really uncomfortable with that kiss and he would scream at her for not doing it realistically. She was doing like, there was a weird one slot where she went off to be a country music star while there was a writer's strike during iCarly. And while she was seemingly 17, she got in a relationship with a 29 year old man. Just the cherry on top of the several horrifying things that happen in this book. Like there's just so many horrible things. I wanna see if I can find the exact age difference. Yeah, he's 27, she's 18. So it's technically not a crime, it's just disgusting. Then basically what happens is her mother passes away. The book starts with this and then the first half of the book ends with this where her mother is passing away. Her and her brothers are saying things, hoping to kind of break their mother out of the coma that she's in, trying to kind of wake her up, saying shocking things about their life. Her brothers leave and then she tells her mother that she's 85 pounds and she's so confident that that's going to wake her mother up because that's her mother's dream weight for her. 85 pounds is so, so tiny. It's so horrifying. It's such an effective scene. Oh, it's such good writing. So that does wake her mother up, <laughs> which is, absolutely insane. Later on, she goes to host Nickelodeon Worldwide Day of Play. And while she's about to do that, her father calls and is like, no, your mom's gonna die for real. She goes to the hospital and her mother passes away. The entire time she's been on iCarly, she's basically been told by the creator, allegedly Dan Schneider, allegedly, that she's gonna get a spinoff called Just Puck It because everyone loves Sam because Jeanette McCurdy is a very, very good comedic actress. And I agree with this. Like you watch old episodes of iCarly and like, it's a lot, but she's so funny. She's a very, very funny, funny performer. So she was promised a spinoff and then it gets turned into a kind of duo hander, Sam and Cat, which is Jeanette McCurdy and pop princess Ariana Grande. Thank you, next. <laughs> Uh, this is really when Miss Jeanette is in the trenches. Like she is not doing well. Her mental health is in the shitter. She doesn't want to be on Sam and Cat. She's just not having a good time. She starts abusing alcohol at this time as well. It's just not going well for her. Additionally, and this is something that's been picked up a lot by news outlets and it's really fucking pissing me off because like news outlets are like, actually Jeanette McCurdy hates Ariana Grande. And it's like, actually I implore you to have one iota of critical reading ability because she says that she started to resent Ariana Grande during filming because the network was pitting them against each other. Like it's not Ariana and she admits that. She's not saying like Ariana Grande is a fucking bitch and I hate her. What we're not gonna do is pit two women who were in an abusive situation together trying to survive against each other. <laughs> okay. It's just these news articles that are now like picking up being like, in Jeanette McCurdy's new book, <laughs> she said she hated Ariana. They want to tap into Ariana Grande's fan base. It's just so, it makes me mad. It's just such horrible, awful journalism. But Ariana Grande would be written out of episodes so she could perform at the Billboard Music Awards. And it really triggered Jeanette because her career was flatlining at this time and she had to turn down two movie projects while she was on iCarly and she wasn't they, the writers were like we're not gonna write you out of an episode so she gets pissed and the one saving grace of her being on Sam and Kat is she was promised she would get to direct an episode they say the whole season you're gonna get to direct an episode you're gonna get to and then she doesn't they just like at the last minute are like no sorry and a producer says to her like hey girl 
I really wanted you to direct, but somebody else here threatened to quit if you direct. Just, it pissed me off, it made me feel so, so sad for her. So she's just having a horrible time on Sam and Cat. At the end of the day, Sam and Cat ends um, because Dan Schneider had allegations of abuse against him. While Sam and Cat was filming, there was already so many allegations of abuse. He wasn't allowed to be on set. He had to be in a cave across the compound they were filming, surrounded by cold cuts, looking at a monitor, barking orders. But when Sam and Cat ended, they were like, Jeanette McCurdy hates that Ariana is getting paid more. It's like, no, Dan Schneider's an abuser, allegedly. She develops bulimia. She first goes to therapy to kind of deal with her bulimia, then leaves therapy because in a session with her therapist, her therapist is like, yo, I mean, she doesn't say yo, she's a therapist. <laughs> like, what's up with your relationship with your mother? I know she's passed on. And basically her therapist illuminates all of these really abusive patterns in their relationship. And she can't deal with that, so she leaves. But then she gets another therapist and she works towards eating disorder recovery. Oh my, uh, also around this time, Jeanette McCurdy finds out that her father is not her real father. Hey, it's me editing, wearing the uh, same outfit. Let's give it up. In this next clip, I use the term real father when I should be saying biological father, which is fucked up on like so many levels. I'm like watching it back like, oh my fucking God, you sound so evil and awful. What I mean is during this time, Jeanette McCurdy finds out that her father is not her biological father. So she reaches out and figures out that her biological father is a trombone player in California. And he's like a jazz musician and she brings Miranda Cosgrove with her, and uh, she reconnects with her father. The book ends with her forging a relationship with her biological father, working towards recovery from eating disorder. The last two chapters are, first of all, her telling Miranda Cosgrove she's not gonna do the iCarly reboot, which I really appreciated. But Jeanette's just like, I don't wanna be known as Sam. Like, I really don't wanna do it. I don't want to. And then also her mulling over her mother's death. That's what happened. It's a wonderful book. You should definitely read it. Oh my God, please read it. Thank you so much for getting to the end of the video, if you did, and for watching, if you did. All of my links will be in the description below. I'll see you soon. Bye.